In this video, we're going to go over the basics of getting started with the Easy HOA Management software, which will include some of the first steps that uh, you'll want to take to get, get your data entered, um, get your payment processing account set up. Uh, we'll also go over some billing and payments and the dues and how to set those up, show you some of the communication tools that you can use, as well as some other tools like violations, requests, uh, website, uh, owner portal, things like that. So this is kind of like an overview video. Uh, first, I'd like to show you the menu on the left. This is uh, where you can go to navigate to go to each different page of the website or the software. When you first log in, you'll be guided to the dashboard page, which will show you some quick stats about what's going on. Next, we have email, text, and phone. These are communication tools that we'll go over in a minute, as well as violations, requests. The units tab is where you will spend some of your time to make sure the dues are set up correctly, make sure the owners are connected to the, the correct unit, um, see if there's any balances. We'll take a look at some of these in detail in a minute. We've also got owners. This is where you can create an owner and attach it to a unit as well as reset an owner's login information for the owner portal. Um, just make sure their owner information mailing address and things like that are, are accurate. This documents page is where you can keep track of your documents. You can have subfolders under each folder. We have a form builder as well as a templates page and we'll go over this templates page in, in a moment. Um, some reports, some contractors and vendors, and then some tools that can help you keep track of your boards, your committees. Um, we can also import your owners and units and their billing cycles all in one import, which is nice. This would be probably the first thing that we would want to focus on when you first get your software is to come here, download this template, um, try to put in as much info as you can and then send that template to us and we can import that information for you. Uh, the next thing when you first get this software would probably be to go to this payment processing page and set up uh, there's an application that you have to complete to be able to process credit cards and ACH payments and things like that. We recommend doing it early just because it takes a, a little bit of time, sometimes up to a week or so. We also have a print invoice feature as well as the website and some tools there, um, some settings and then some late and lean rules. So that's a general navigation of the management software. Like I said before, the probably the most important things would be to get your your units imported and your owners imported as well as get started on that payment processing application. As mentioned before, on the import, we can import the billing information of the dues. So the amount, the next due date, how often that those dues repeat, like every year, every one month, etc. Once all of that information is imported, you're going to see that information in, in the software. One of the places you can see it is under reports and then active dues. This is going to give you a breakdown of every unit and the amount of their dues and then their next due date. If something looks wrong, you can click on it and it will take you to the unit page. There's another way to get here as well. And then from this page, there's a button called billing up here at the top. And this is where you could change their billing. So for example, this unit 112 Twin Oaks Drive is set to be billed their dues every month for $120. And their next day is January 1st. So that's this, this specific unit. This is the main unit page, which shows some information, their balance, um, some of the owners, and then some billing history down at the bottom. So that's how the billing and the dues are set up and created. So they're per unit. And again, this is another way we can get there is from going to the units tab, clicking on each unit. And then from there, you'll go to the unit profile and then you can go to billing. So once that's set up, those invoices are going to be generated automatically. Uh, and, and how it works is they get generated 10 days before the due date. It doesn't mean they're due yet, it just gets generated as an invoice on the unit account so that there's something there so that we can 
if we need to, we can print it off or we can email that invoice over to the owner. So let me show you some of those settings. So if we go over to the templates page, these are some automatic templates that can get sent out automatically from the software. And if it has a green checkbox, and that means it's turned on. So there's one here called dues invoice reminder. So what happens is this is the, the automatic email, or it could be a text as well, just a quick reminder that it gets sent to the homeowner and explains the upcoming due. It, it gets sent 10 days before the due date, and then you can also edit that invoice by clicking on, on the title. So you can make this say um, whatever you want and customize it for your HOA. There are some placeholders where you can add information so that you, when this goes out to maybe a hundred people at the same time, the owner name is customized to the, the correct owner. Next, I would like to show how we can set a unit up on automatic payments. To do that, we can go to the units page and let's say we're gonna set this person up on automatic payments. So we go to the, the unit because all the billing is done by the unit. And then there's a button called payment methods. And from here, we can create different payment methods, uh, ACH accounts or credit cards. If we want them to be on automatic payment, then we make it a default payment method. Um, it will ask us, are we sure? Yes, we want to make that an automatic payment method. If we go back to the unit page, we'll see now that they're on auto pay here. So their next due date is March 1st, 2023. Uh, if we don't do anything, then on March 1st, 2023, they will automatically be charged. Um, and in this case, they have a credit balance. So they will just get charged the, the difference. So $60 automatically. So that's how billing works. And for you to be able to utilize this feature, you have to have the payment processing a merchant account completed or else obviously you won't have the way to charge someone by a credit card or ACH payment method. Okay, next I wanted to go over a few of the communication tools. So those are located under the inbox. And then we have a few called email, text, and phone. The email is your own full-blown email account that we give you. Usually it's the name of your association and then at easyhoa.email. What's nice about this is that boards change. Since that's changing all the time, your email is going to stay the same and it's going to be in your software. You'll always be able to see it as uh, the board members are changing. Um, and then there will be a, a record of, of those as well. To be able to send an email, we go to the Compose button. Once here, you can send an email to one person or whole groups of people. So for example, if we were going to send an email to all the primary owners, we could filter it by those, which would pull up only the primary owners in this list. We could add all. And then from here, there's a template drop down. So we could select our own custom template, or we could just type in uh, an email that we want to send. So for an example, we could select pool maintenance and choose that template and it would populate it down here in the content box. And from there we could uh, change some of this info. We can insert placeholders and then we can send. And then when we hit send, it will send to all of those uh, owners at once. And that's how the email function works. Next, I'll go over the phone feature. So with the phone feature, we can provide a phone number for you. So for example, this is a phone number for this specific HOA. This phone number doesn't cost extra. We include it into the, the fee of the software. So how it works is this phone number will be tied to your HOA. Um, you don't have to have a specific phone device because you can use pretty much any device. I have a little support document on our support site that shows how it works. First, you click the button that says make a call. And then next, it will have a box that says you. This is where you would put your personal cell phone number in there. Next, there's a box that says which owner do you want to call? Or you can call uh, a manual phone number. Then you hit call. And what happens is our system calls you, calls your personal cell phone device. And when you answer, then it starts calling the homeowner. Um, and the homeowner receives your call from the HOA number. So they don't see your personal cell phone number. They just see 
the HOA phone number that comes with uh, your management software. In this case, it would be this one. The other things that we provide here are call recordings. So if they call this number, um, we can have it route to a specific number or you or it can just go to voicemail and they can leave a message in here and then there will be a little one here or a number depending on how many voicemails that you have not listened to yet. The other communication feature that we include is text capability. So with that same number a homeowner could text the number um, and then you could also text your homeowners as well and then keep track of all those in one central location. Those are the main communication features other than some of the automatic templates, emails, and texts that can be sent based on rules. So for example, payment receipts can be sent following a successful payment. If their payment fails, uh, they can get an email letting them know that, as well as a due invoice reminder, um, and then some other ones. There's also an area down here for custom templates where you can create custom templates. And then lastly, there's a communication settings down here in late slash lean rules. And these are rules that you can add to your software once someone is late so that it automatically is kind of taking care of those notifications and those fees and letting the homeowner know that they are late. For example, this rule is a late rule when the owner is 15 days past due they will get an email and a text and the notification that gets sent to them will be the one called late notice. Um, we don't have a fee on there but we could add a fee as well and then we have two other rules that you could add or don't have to add. These are some automatic emails and texts that can go out as well. Lastly I'll show you on some of the owners pages for example if we go to one of the owners there's going to be some communication features here as well um, this is just in the event that like these inboxes are getting really full and it's hard to track down maybe a message that you sent to a specific owner but you know you sent one to them you could go to the owner page and then there's going to be this little communication box it's going to show any emails that you have sent or any emails that they've sent back any text messages that you sent back and forth uh, any phone calls as well as some system notifications, which would be automatic notifications that our software sends out automatically to them, kind of like a payment receipt or some things like that. Lastly, I'm going to go over a few of the tools that the software comes with. Um, some of those more important ones we feel like are the violations tool. This is a page where you can keep track of your violations. You can add a violation by clicking this plus button. I'll show you what that looks like real quick. Um, title, description, you can have some different types. You can also create more types than this if there's some that you need. Um, you can select the owner, the unit and the owner. You can add files and some internal notes that they don't see but you would see as a board and, and as an admin of the software. You can skip a notification or you can uh, send them an, a notification with this violation as well. Again, that goes back to those custom templates we were looking at a minute ago. So once you've created a violation, this is what it looks like on uh, just a quick list. And it has a status of open or closed. For the open ones, you might kind of pay more attention to and, and click on the violation and kind of see what's going on. See the description, see if you need to do anything for that violation and then once you're done you can close that. Really similar with requests as well. It's a similar tool where you can kind of keep track of uh, requests, architectural, general maintenance, things like that, who, who sent it, some files that might go with it. Um, this request will also be available for the owner to complete on their side. If they have an owner portal and they log into their own owner account, they can make a request from, from that portal as well. The documents tool is pretty neat. You can organize these documents into folders. And then from the folders, you can also create subfolders, or you can just put the files right in the main folder. Um, so here's an example. Um, to add more, you can just push this plus button to add more files, or you can add a subfolder. One of the neat things about this documents page is these two columns here, shared with owner and shared with website. If this is enabled as yes, then 
the owner will see these files on their owner portal when they log in. Uh, so same with the website. If it's set to yes, um, then anybody that goes to the website can see those files. Lastly, for this video, I just wanted to go over the website just for a minute. We do provide you with a website. Um, you can get a custom domain if you'd like to. Just let us know and we can help you with that. Or we give you a domain that will always show right here as well. Uh, so this is an example of a website that we could provide for you. It's got a few tabs up at the top. It's got a home page, a board page, which could you could show who's on the board, a contact page where they could fill this out and it goes directly to your HOA email. It's got the docs that we just went over a minute ago. And then it's also got some events and news uh, announcements, things like that. And then up here in the top right corner, it's got the homeowner login or the board login where you, the board login is where we just were this side of things and the owner login just a quick look at that from here just really quickly this is the owner portal it shows kind of the details of the unit their balance kind of what kind of cycle they're on their billing history and then up in the top right corner we have some menu items for specifically this owner where he could make a payment he could save a payment method um, he could see documents, uh, here, I'll click on a few here, documents there, he could see a directory of who's in the HOA, just their addresses and their names. He could issue a request through here, he could create one, he, we don't have surveys yet but that's coming soon. Violations, he could see if he has any violations, he can't create one but he could see his own if he has any. And then of course some settings and then log out. So that's kind of the homeowner page. And then back on the management software side of things, we're back on the website area. This is where you can edit any of those pages on the website. So you could do it yourself if you have a little bit of knowledge, um, or we can try to do our best to help you as well. So that's kind of an overview of the software, um, of billing, payments, dues, communications, uh, some of the tools, and the navigation of how to get to things and how things work. So. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can give us a call, 801-528-7690, or you can email us at support at easyhoa.com. Uh, thanks for watching.